name is Sophie and yeah, I'm the corporate recruiter of SDX Group. We are an intermediary and trading firm active on both fixed income as well as the renewable energy market. I'm working from our Amsterdam headquarters. Next to that one, we also have two smaller offices, one in New York City and the other one in Gothenburg in Sweden. Uh, my okay. name is Simra. I'm 26 years old and I live in Rotterdam. Um, I've been working as a recruiter for two years and a little bit more. <laughs> um, I used to work for Randstad. Right now, I'm not working for them anymore. And I'll tell you all about it uh, during this uh, interview. So my name is Luz and I've graduated two years ago from the IBM Master. Uh, and after that, I started to work as a recruitment consultant. Uh, so I've been working now for almost two years as well. Uh, and part of my job is to find candidates or people who are looking for a new job and uh, to help them find a new opportunity. Uh, and I do this for multiple companies. So it can be really small sized companies up to big multinational companies uh, and all uh, in Amsterdam. It definitely makes sense to apply now for jobs because this is now a good moment where you can screen the job market and there's a lot of movement on the labor market these days. So for example, you will also see which company is taking their social responsibilities during these tough times. You can investigate for yourself which market you want to grow into and develop into. And now this is the time that you can do your homework and also your research. For example, you can check the financial statement and stability of a company you're interested in and you could also read the latest news about them. Um, what you can also do is to check with your family and with your friends where they are working and how their companies are performing these days and you can ask them to refer you. Uh, I think it makes very much sense to um, apply in this moment. The thing is, some branches fall down and some branches start to flourish, right? So there is always an opportunity. I feel also like opportunities are created by yourself and not always uh, from outside. So have a positive uh, lookout. I think a lot of things, um, a lot of moments when you're looking for a job, you're very, how do you say it, in a vulnerable spot because you are trying to make ends meet, you have other problems that you're dealing with. So it's very important to stay positive and not give up. Um, the equation of applying for a job, not getting it, stays the same, you know? It might be more, you would think, but it depends on which branch you're looking for a job. So I would really um, say continue on looking for jobs, but also broaden your horizon and try to look for jobs in sectors that are flourishing right now or that have more job opportunities. The ones that are completely dead, uh, I would not put my effort much in that, especially if you were looking for a job in a branch that is not you know, up and running right now. I would leave that to rest, try here and there, especially if you know people within that branch, try through your network, but also look out for other jobs that are uh, available in the branches that are more flourishing. So yes, I would completely advise everyone to do their best and put themselves out there and uh, continue on applying for jobs. I think it still makes sense to apply. So uh, what I'm noticing is that of course, some of the positions are currently put on hold. So not all the companies are really actively looking and more positions are opening up again. And um, although you're applying maybe for a position that's now on hold, at least the company already knows that you're interested, in, uh, already received your CV and those kind of things. So it makes it easier when the vacancy opens up again to, to reach out to you and, and start again. Uh, so don't worry about that. And I think just apply when you see something interesting coming by. Um, and of course, you can always reach out to a recruiter or other HR person uh, that is responsible to ask about it. Uh, they can, of course, tell you if it makes more sense to apply uh, in maybe in a few weeks rather than now.
So yeah, more steps in the recruitment process these days are done digitally or through phone. Um, yeah, there is always a way how you can stand out of the crowd. For example, by showing that you're very persistent and also uh, proactive, yet not desperate. By um, proactive, I mean that you should keep a good communication with a company where you applied. That means call and email proactively the recruiter, demonstrate and explain your interest and also show that you did your research on them. You can also prepare arguments why you are an added value to the organization. So prepare your own personal sales pitch. I feel like, um... There's a lot of people applying for jobs in general. The ways I uh, think you can stand out are um, by being assertive uh, in the uh, application um, process. So what I mean by that is when you find a vacancy online and you see a contact person, for example, reach out to that contact person, apply, but also ask questions beforehand. Um, or call them. If you see a number, don't be afraid to call. Just be like, hey, my name is so-and-so. I saw your vacancy. I already applied. I still had some questions. I'm very interested in this position and in this vacancy. Uh, could you give me some more information on X, Y, and Z? Uh, I feel like the more knowledge or the more information you have about a company, uh, knowing what they really stand for, uh, what they're really trying to do, and if you see yourself, you know, within that, um, in the, within that story, can help you stand out. Well, of course, a lot of it became online. Um, so especially normally, I think for a job you have two or three rounds you have to go through. Especially the first or the first two rounds will be digital now. So rather than going to the office, meeting up in person, uh, the interview will take place digitally. Um, and I think everything can be used. I've seen Skype, Zoom, uh, even FaceTime. So uh, yeah, but it will be online. Uh, what you then see is that a lot of companies are also a bit in doubt what to do with a final round because for both you and for a company, it's nice to, to be able to see each other face to face as well for you to see the office and those kind of things. And I think that's a thing a lot of companies are currently struggling with. Um, do we wait until we can invite someone in or um, is everything online during the process? And I think, I don't know how it will develop and what's exactly the case right now, but that's, I think, the thing a lot of companies are currently looking at. So, but count on the first two rounds at least to be digital. If you do a video interview these days, then it is very important that you see it as a proper and a formal interview and also see it in a way that if it was in person. So therefore, a couple of tips for you to be perfectly prepared. First of all, dress accordingly and make sure you have everything said and done. And uh, yeah, look for a quiet place where you have a very good internet connection. Before the interview, Test and try out your Skype account or Zoom. Maybe try it with a friend, see how the connection is. And uh, yeah, last but not least, prepare a lot of questions for your interviewer and research on the company where you're applying for. Uh, it's a difficult, uh, more difficult to find um, like a common ground or a connection on the phone. So don't be afraid to do a video call if you're asked to. Um, because that's when a recruiter really can see uh, how serious you are and uh, what you look like. If you, you know, are well prepared, invested in the job, um, and a phone call uh, feels less, I guess, less a little bit less formal than the video call. How can you be prepared for both of them? You know, be in a quiet space. Really take your time to get into like the zone i guess so have like a 15 minutes before drink some water be relaxed so you really come across relaxed too but try to to fit it with the company the same if if you would go to the company if it's a company where they expect you to wear a suit 
wear a suit, but if they expect uh, you to come in the office in jeans, why not wear the jeans in your room? So if you had a party the day before, maybe d make sure that there are no beer bottles in the background. <laughs> Yeah, how we handle it in our company, we have time slots at the beginning where you can come to the office and pick up your work laptop. And then the whole onboarding presentations are conducted online. There are two daily calls with a team, one in the morning and one after lunch, which are meetings in order to discuss what's going on job-wise and on the financial markets. The most of the conversations are done as much as possible through video chat to keep the, engage, uh, the engagement always live. Yeah. Don't hesitate to call your manager or your colleague in a moment when you are stuck at work and you don't know the solution to a problem. In, um, yeah, in STX, we also have the setup of a virtual coffees with colleagues to keep the team spirit up. And from an HR and recruitment point of view, we do a first week check-in with a new colleague and also first month check-in. We also do these check-ins on a um, normal basis when we work normally from the office. But of course, in these times, it's even more important to show to the employee, hey, we are here and to see how his um, onboarding experience went. Um, what we also normally have are Friday afternoon drinks with a team during normal times. This unfortunately is not possible these days due to social distancing, but we do bi-weekly Friday virtual drinks uh, with a whole team. And uh, in order to keep a good engagement, we have either um, um, an update from management or we do a quiz with a, with a team. And um, yeah, what a company like ours really appreciates is a proactive mindset and attitude. And it doesn't matter if you work from home or if you work in the office. Um, what it expects from you, I feel like, is um, um, that you show up. Uh, and what I mean by that is you really uh, um, ask how you can help and be at service. And ask what they expect from you because maybe it takes a couple of days for you to get your laptop and other uh, devices uh, to be installed before you can actually start working make sure you're on top of that don't wait don't have a relaxed attitude be the one who is uh, you know making sure uh, you can get to your job and don't be like oh they told me to wait and relax uh, not relax, but you know, they told me they're gonna fix it and then just wait until they do because right now a lot of uh, companies, organizations are in stress, you know, it's a new situation for everyone and uh, try to be um, cooperative and think with your manager or anyone who's, uh, you know, employing you or uh, showing you the way within uh, the new position that you're in. That's gonna be strange. <laughs> Um, I hope for you guys that when you start to apply your first day can be back in the office, but yeah, we don't know what is going to happen and if it's the case. Otherwise, I think uh, try to be more proactive than you already are. So normally it's quite easy to meet everyone in the office. You go uh, and grab a coffee and you see some new people and you introduce yourself. Try to do the same digitally. So when you're in a meeting and you don't know half of the, of the people, just introduce yourself quickly. Hey, it's my first week. I just started to work here. Hope to see all of you face to face soon. Uh, maybe send out an email to your team. Do stuff like that, but be a bit more proactive than normally to make sure that everyone knows that you're new and that you're in, um, in the new team. Um, and I think, yeah, that's the best way to start when you are not able to see everyone uh, face to face. We, where we are living right now can be very tough and demotivating. Um, but especially then, it is very important that you don't get dragged down and you keep a positive mindset. You can take this time off to use it efficiently. So invest in yourself and in your own development. It is a good time also to get a clear mind about what are your career ambitions and how you can achieve them. 
there are several possibilities you can do these days. You can participate at webinars, you can look for online courses, you can invest in new hobbies, you can uh, study a foreign language, you can watch documentaries of topics which interest you, and also extend your network on LinkedIn. There is also the possibility to do a competency or a personality test. There are so many of them online, which you can even do for free. And it also helps you to reflect on your personal skills. And um, yeah, maybe it can help you that you write these core skills down in your CV and you even tell your interviewer about it once you can go to a job interview. From my personal experience, it's very uh, hard to uh, say because I uh, did an internship um, and then I got into a job right away. So I don't have it, that experience of not being employed uh, right after. Um, but I do know a lot of people have that uh, situation. I would really, uh, like I said in the beginning of the interview, um, focus on being positive and being happy uh, within yourself. Uh, the fact is that, uh, you know, applying for a job is a very weird uh, state of place to be in because everything depends on that job, right? Like our uh, social status, our validation, how uh, it's part of our identity. That's what I read somewhere the other day. And it's really true because when someone asks you, uh, hey, how are you doing? Or introduce yourself. You start with your name, your age, maybe where you live, and then you tell them what your position is or what company you're working for. So it's a very big part of who we are uh, within the society. And I feel like uh, uh, saying you're jobless or looking for a job is kind of looked up down on in a way that can make you feel a type of way, you know, uh, try to look out for yourself and really focus on what you're doing and your process and ignore what's happening outside of you. It's easier said than done, but um, it you have to, you know, to stay positive and really, uh, uh, you know, get that job that's for you. Um, I think it's quite hard. I think the one thing is that keep applying. So if you di don't find anything yet and you find a lot of trouble because a lot is put on hold, just keep out sending applications yeah. and be busy with applying rather than thinking, okay, this is not the time. I will take four weeks uh, and then I will start again. Just keep on going. Um, and otherwise, yeah, I think also try to do a bit stuff that you find is fun and would, would you have the time now as well. Of course, you have to keep applying. But yeah, when you start to work, you, you will work 40 hours a week. So during the week, there's no spare time. So also try maybe enjoy it a little bit uh, find a temporary job there are still a lot of temporary jobs um, due to the summer season uh, go work work in an ice cream shop for three days a week um, do a bit stuff like that uh, to to find uh, a bit of a purpose um, yeah you can of course uh, sign up for a lot of um, uh, courses to, yeah. to learn Google Analytics and stuff. You can do it, but in the end, I don't think it will give you that big of an advantage when mm. applying. Um, can of course help. It's always useful to do something like that, but don't think it's necessary to do that. And I think the best best thing is to keep mo being motivated and to keep going um, and sending out applications. So yeah, first of all, um, yeah, despite these uh, current circumstances, I'm happy to emphasize that our company is still growing and we are still looking for new talents to expand our international teams. Um, that is because we as a, as a trading and intermediary firm are active in niche markets. And for more than 15 years now, we have established a very stable customer portfolio and are present in different and emerging markets. Economy, of course, is very uncertain these days, yet there are business areas which are more stable, such as ours, the green energy markets, but also fixed income markets. And uh, yeah, you can look at the news and you will see that the green economy is still 
extremely relevant these days, maybe even more than before. So if we look at STX, what's behind our success and our growth? Yeah, of course, these are our employees. And um, yeah, they come from diver diverse different backgrounds and we have more than 25 different nationalities working over here. And because of this uh, diversity, we continuously develop new solutions and innovative ideas to offer to our international customers. And with a great performance, you're also rewarded with a great growth. And yeah, most importantly, as an employer, we also encourage the healthy lifestyle of our employees. And we do this by offering a um, very good work-life balance. And we have a football team, we have weekly boot camp classes, we have a monthly massage, and we have fresh fruits every day. And last but not least, we're a sales company. We like to work hard, we like to play hard. So we love to celebrate successes, which we do in our yearly STX weekend, in our, uh, during our Christmas gala, and of course, on our um, Friday drinks.